with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and I wanted to do another video on twin blocks. I know it's been a really long time since I did one. I feel like since Invisalign with MA came out, I'm definitely seeing a lot less, a lot fewer twin block cases. So I've gotten a little out of the habit of doing them, but there's definitely still a population who wants to do them. We can go over like who they're good for and what that population might be and the whys behind it. Um, and you know, I think the more Invisalign with MA cases I've done, the more I've kind of refined my twin block protocol and I'm learning to do twin block even better than I ever did before. The other thing I've done since then is I'm taking um, Dr. Simon Wong from Australia's um, courses right now. Um, he's really into removable appliances in younger, younger kids. We're talking like the six, sevens, and eights, which is something if you listen to my videos, you know I'm super into as well. But even his protocols are, are making me better at twin blocks. So um, I might answer a few questions that maybe I didn't answer as well in the other videos and my answers might be a little bit different. So definitely before you listen to this video, I want you to do a few things. Definitely listen to all my other videos on twin block. To access those, you can get them from my phase one course, which is available at Straight Smile Solutions. You can go to the phase one playlist within the YouTube channel, which is free. Um, you can watch all those, there's a couple hundred there, or you can just search by keyword within the YouTube channel. If you don't know how to do that, go up to the top, go up to the right, find the magnifying glass, put in the keyword twin block, and you can watch all those videos. Other thing I'd love for you to do if you have time is, um, or if you have access, if you are an Invisalign provider or if you have access to their courses, however that may be, um, log in, go to their educational center, and you know what? I'm actually going to tell you exactly where to go. So hang on, I'm going to do it as we talk. Log in, go to their educational center. It's at the top. It's between, for me, between store and support. And go to the educational center and put in MA as a keyword. Now, sometimes they have actual courses, you know, be it live, synchronous, virtual courses. Um, sometimes they have on-demand courses. So if you go to education and you go to courses and events, you're gonna see there's educational programs, upcoming courses, but I want you to do all those. Educational programs, upcoming courses, archive presentations, all of the above, as well as the next tab down below is video library. There definitely should be stuff on MA in there. You may not get CE from all of this, and I'm putting it in as we speak, the keyword, see what comes up for MA. But definitely there's stuff there um, you wanna click on and just really go into um, anything teen, anything kids, anything you can find and learn everything that they recommend, you know? So that would be my preparatory work because essentially, remember, Invisalign with MA is the 2.0 version of the twin block. Of course, done with CAD CAM technology, not done with regular study models in acrylic. Um, so it's a 2.0 version. A lot of the features of the twin block are in the Invisalign with MA and now that Invisalign with MA is releasing their actual expander device here in 2024, it's basically gonna be the same thing. However, the nice thing about Invisalign with MA is that when we can go over some of the benefits, why it's maybe perhaps better. Okay, so don't forget, let's talk about a little bit about the ideal time for a twin block and it's the same, basically I re refined my timing based on Invisalign with MA's research protocols because they went in crazy down a rabbit hole into the research as to what works and what doesn't work. And it was pretty much the same as I was doing anyways, but now I feel really firm on my opinions. So no, I don't do twin block before the sixes are in. The first molars, the six-year-old molars must be fully in, all four it's like a foundation thing. They need to be there because if you just start expanding or moving things and they're not in, weird things can happen, basically what it comes down to. And that's also Invisalign's protocol. So make sure your sixes are in. Now, of course, I realize that some patients have a different dental age from their chronological age, from their skeletal age. So, um, you know, and, and sometimes there's one-off situations where something's impacted or whatever, but you know, those can all be done on a case-by-case -case basis. Definitely run those by an orthodontist. But for the most part, you wanna wait until sixes are in, until a couple incisors are in, because you wanna be able to establish what the overjet really is and what the molar for classification is and, and have a solid foundation. There's just no reason to be starting that young at five. There's just none. If, you, if your patient really wants to get started, if they're really having that much airway issues, 
that they're begging to get started with a twin block, first of all, they're probably not going to be able to keep the darn thing in their mouth because if they're having that much airway issues, they really need to go to an ENT first. And that is something that is a big part of Simon Wong's course is the whole collaborating with the ENT, which you guys know if you work with me, I'm always telling you to go to ENT. And a lot of you guys are pushing back saying it's too expensive or my doctor, my patient doesn't want to go. They only want ortho. Well, it's kind of standard of care. You need to sometimes run it by the ENT first. They can decide if they want to do surgery now or later. They may say, okay, to start with ortho, we can reevaluate for surgery later, but let them do it because if you're going to shove a bulky appliance in a patient's mouth who already has a compromised airway, you might be doing bad things to this patient and you need to let the medical professional for the actual airway make the call on that. You don't get to make the call on that. You're just the call of the dentist that does the teeth and the bite. Okay. So this is a collaborative effort amongst professional providers. You need to defer to them on those type of cases. And there's going to be times when, you know, if there's a wait for a year or two, you know, I don't mind doing something like a healthy start habit corrector, uh, U concept, U trainer, an MRC. I don't know what their version of that is, but one of these appliances that has a little expansion, it's not customized. Um, you know, it's nothing that clips in. You don't have to take a scan. It's cheap. It's low cost. Um, probably nothing's going to go wrong if you don't totally supervise it that well. They wear these suckers at night. And when they're home, they'll get definitely some some benefits, you know, airway-wise, swallow-wise. Um, and it'll give you some idea if they can keep the appliance in their mouth. That's important because if they don't have enough of an airway to be able to keep an appliance in their mouth and it's blocking their airway and they're spitting it out at night, we don't want to be, you know, going down this rabbit, this this circle, you know, of, of something that's not going to happen. In that case, we need to unblock the airway so that we can actually successfully wear the appliance, if that makes sense. So that's why I kind of like these these prefab appliances, these early trainer, bio trainer appliances, just to kind of see if they can keep it in, if they can tolerate it, if they have enough of an airway to get through it while we're getting on the list. But that doesn't mean we don't get to do the customized one until they go to the ENT. So I, I don't buy that people can't get into an ENT in at least a year and a year and a half. And if they're young enough, that's totally fine, especially if we're waiting for other teeth to come in. Go ahead, go to the ENT first if there's concerns. And if you need your surgery, you get your surgery. Otherwise, the ENT will sign a paper, and I have a template of that if you want to contact me and release them back to you to go ahead and do expansion and growth modification as needed. Okay, other thing that you got to keep in mind with twin blocks is for the most part, when you fabricate a twin block, um, I would say the default is going to be that they're going to make it edge to edge. So that means if you have two models that are, you know, half step class two, they're going to kind of make it like set it so that the bite takes it edge to edge, which is basically how Invisalign with MA works. However, Invisalign with MA does things in increments. That means they do two steps at a time, unless that's generally the default, unless you ask for something else. I don't love the idea of just discluding the, the, condyles out of the sockets and the joints and moving it that far forward. What if they have an eight millimeter or a six millimeter, millimeter overjet? That's not good for the patient to do that. And you can do the same thing with twin blocks, especially if you think you're going to be wearing this for a long time. If you have a six or eight millimeter overjet, realistically, the other thing you have to keep in mind on timing is that we really want to time this for the perfect time when before they start losing their C's, D's, and E's, or especially their D's and E's, because that's where our clasps are going to be. And if they start losing those, you're going to have a heck of a time in a twin block, and the same rules apply with Invisalign with MA. They will not let you do it when you're losing a bunch of teeth. So you have to get the timing right with Invisalign with MA. Sixes have to be in, a couple incisors have to be in, but they can't be losing all the back teeth yet. If you get to that point, they're not going to have retention and the foundation, and they're going to tell you you can't do it, you have to wait. You're going to get rejected from Invisalign. They also reject you from Invisalign when crowns are too short, clinical crowns are too bulbous. I mean, sometimes your tooth shape does not get um, doesn't get accepted. So I recommend always, if you're doing the same thing, Invisalign with MA, picking really good cases. There's sometimes when you just miss the boat and it's just not possible. And sometimes you just have to wait till the teeth come in and then you can finish and go ahead and do your... Invisalign with MA, when a few more teeth come in, you can get started and do some initial straightening. And speaking of prepping and initial straightening, sometimes, 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 we need to do some, like in those class two div two cases where there's no overjet, but yet they're clearly class two. The the MA or the twin block's not gonna work because you don't have overjet. So sometimes you need to do maybe do some expansion, toss some braces on first to unravel the crowding. 
and to give them the overjet that's kind of hidden there so that you can then go ahead and make the twin block work. And like I said, we do the same thing in Visalign with MA. However, it's all baked into one plan, which makes it kind of easier because you don't have to necessarily do another scan or another impression or another appliance. So you got to keep all these things in mind because if you're going to need multiple appliances due to a very severe case and maybe you need to make a couple of appliances because teeth are going to come in and out or you're going to have to do incremental, incremental movements because you don't want to damage their joint because there's six or eight millimeters of advancement and one twin block is not going to fit for two years. One twin block is not going to fit for one year. You're probably going to need more than one. So you might as well just advance some three millimeters to start and have it be comfortable and safe and healthy and class be good. And then in six months, once they get there, then you can move on to the next one and make another one. However, if you're doing multiple lab fees, you know, and I'm assuming a set of this, especially if you customize it, is going to be maybe 400, 500. If you're doing two sets, you're basically at the price with Invisalign with MA. So you might as well go find yourself an Itero and just do the Invisalign with MA, which also straightens the teeth. I'm just saying that's Invisalign first, at least. But, you know, all kinds of things to keep in mind. Let's talk a little bit more about customization of the twin block. Um, you can customize it in all kinds of ways to really achieve what you want to do. And we go over some of this in the previous videos. Um, but obviously the most obvious are going to be the expansion screws that you can put in. You can put transverse expansion screws in. You can put sagittal expansion screws in either anterior or posterior, depending on if you have a slight class three and upright incisors, or if you maybe lost um, an E early and you want to uplate the molar. You can totally do that. That's a pretty cool thing to do. Uh, obviously, the more bling that you add on it, the more the cost is probably going to go up in terms of design because the more complicated of an appliance it is. Um, what else? So they're pretty good. I mean, you're not going to get quite the same amount of expansion because it's so bulky, especially if you have... Um, if you have a labial bow on it, that's another option. You can put a labial bow, which helps with retention. And I'm totally for that if you're maybe not doing that much expansion or any expansion, or if you have um, upright incisors and we want them to, sorry, say it wrong. You have flared incisors and you don't want them to flare anymore, then yeah, for sure, put a labial bow on it. So you need to decide if you want a labial bow or not. You should say add a labial, labial bow on the upper, don't add it on the lower, um, add a transverse expansion screw, add a posterior sagittal screw always say what it's for the posterior sagittal screw is to upright you know tooth number three the transverse screw is to make the arch wider the labial bow is to prevent flaring of the incisor so you need to tell the lab what you're doing it for that way they understand because sometimes they'll mess it up um, one thing that ma of uh, that tw ma twin block is not great for is um, fixing a deep bite so if you have a super deep bite but class two patient it's probably going to make your bite deeper Sure, you could open the bite first, but I would probably just do it later. Just, you know, you that that's where I mean, you might have to put some braces on first and maybe do a fixed bite plate to level the curve of speed. I mean, it's possible. So sometimes you have to do some prep work. Again, one of the reasons why I like Invisalign with MA, because as long as you get the timing right, you should be able to knock that all out with one set of appliances without a ton of new impressions or scans. Of course, you do with Invisalign with MA and mix and tissue do a lot of, you know, scans and rescans as new teeth come in and they don't fit and stuff like that. So really the same concept, but it doesn't cost you anything, right? The refinements are free. Um, yeah, totally free, including the shipping. Whereas if you have the same thing going on with this, this is going to be $500 each time. So um, one last thing to talk about, you know, when would I maybe choose this over Invisalign with MA? Well, ultimately it comes down to, do you have an iTero scanner? Um, or are you able to provide Invisalign services, depending on what country you're in? Well, some people just they don't like line technology. They just don't, or they just refuse to buy an iTero. They have that medit, they have that three shape. It's just not, they find that this works good enough. Um, so, I mean, I like being able to have more than one option because there's always more than one option for every parent or teen. Um, also, you know, maybe in 1980, people wore these to school. People aren't gonna wear these to school over age third or fourth grade. You have to keep it into account. I mean, I like to have a really frank conversation with the patient and the mom in the room. And I tell mom, you don't get to answer for the kid. Okay, I'm going to ask an honest question. There's no wrong answer. I want the truth. And there's no there's no wrong answer. And I appreciate your answer. And, you know, patient, you can't look at your mom. You got to look at me, you know. Would you be willing to wear something like this? You can choose the color, you know. You can decide if it has glitter. But you have to wear it to school, in class. And it's going to make you talk funny. And it, the funny is probably not going to go away that much, you know, it might get better, but it's, you're still going to talk a little bit funny, you know, um, 
you can't take it out during the day. It will not work if you take it out. And then we have to, if you, if you don't wear it and we you choose this, then your mom's going to have to pay for something else, which is going to be an extra $1,500 and she's not going to be happy. So if you say you're going to wear this, you have to wear it, you know? And if they give you that hesitant or that pause, then I tell mom, no, we're not doing this. Okay? She, they can't force this kid to wear it at school. It won't be worn. And then we're all going to be frustrated. So I just, I want the instant answer out of, out of their face, you know? Otherwise, you, they get the Invisalign with MA, which is not going to cause you really to talk funny. It works just as well. You know, maybe the price point's a little higher, but it's going to be cheaper than doing this first, wasting time, maybe even losing the window of opportunity and then having to pay an upgrade fee. So yeah, this might be cheaper in most in most cases, but if it's not going to be worn, there's no point. I find we have good luck in first graders, second graders, third graders, fourth graders are already pushing it. And it really comes down to what grade they're in. Um, you know, and, and there's going to be some patients that, yeah, they're just not going to wear it, you know, and there's going to be some that don't care and will wear it up until fifth or sixth grade, you know, and they're like, I don't care, you know, and great. That's cool. They can glow in the dark. I'll let them bling it out, put their team colors on it. Um, the sucker does work, but I mean, most likely they're going to be wearing this, you know, for a three millimeter case, maybe four months for a six millimeter case, maybe nine months. For more, they're gonna need a couple of appliances a year. I mean, it's not it's not a short term thing that they're wearing this. And same thing with MA. Most MA cases from start to finish are 40, 35, 40, 50 aligners. Well, that's nine months. So for the harder cases, same thing. And usually you need a free, few reboots as well. All right, that was a lot of information on advanced twin block training. Um, I really welcome you guys to work with us one on one with an a la carte case or do a month to month uh, concierge membership, you will get so much out of developing your cases and you'll get all your questions answered. And you can just do this, you know, one session, one month, whatever works for you. Um, I really don't think I've had anyone that hasn't found it extremely helpful and hasn't made it extremely productive. So we'd love to work with you. All right, you can check it out at straightsmilesolutions.com. Or again, if you wanna learn more, go to my phase one course at Straight Smile Solutions.